Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. I like you so much better now. <laughs> You like me so much better now. Yeah, honestly, we spent years in conflict and it created some pretty big pain points for both of us. Yeah. And when we learned how to become safe inside of conversations, mm. it brought down so many of my walls and I like you so much more. Yeah. And it's interesting because you're less difficult to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, we both. I yeah. mean, we both are better versions of ourselves. We could have written a book on how to not do conflict. But here's the deal: we didn't write a book on how to not do it. <laughs> we created a course called Connected Conflicts on, on how, how to, to do it. Yeah, one of the things is is that conflict. I was filled with anxiety when it came to conflict, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it was high stakes for you as well, right? Yes, because we didn't learn a map of successful conflict. We never saw it done well. We didn't see it modeled. We didn't have the tools, a practical guide. And so we have actually laid out for you practical steps of exactly what to do to create more safety in conversations and to be able to create more repair so that when you have confidence and you know what to do, you show up differently. Yeah. And one of the things is, is that through taking Connected Conflicts, this conflict course that we've created, you're able to develop language mm -hmm. and you can create shared language between you and someone else. I think that that was one of the hard things for us is yep. like, we were having conversations about things, but we weren't having the same conversation yep. because we didn't understand a universal language. Mm -hmm. And once we developed a universal universal language, it actually began to be like, oh, this is so much easier. I'm not continually offended mm -hmm. by the things you're saying because I know what they mean. Yeah. So we want you to join us. Everybody has conflict conversations. Everyone goes through miscommunications, whether it's with your boss, your employees, your romantic partner, yeah. your parents, your, your kids. kids. Like there is no way to avoid miscommunication. So we might as well get great at communication. And so you can watch us. We'll, we'll share how to add safety. We'll give you a practical guide of exactly what to do and steps to do. And then we'll have you watch us do a couple live conflicts so you can see what it looks Ooh. like in real time. People my, love that. They did. They were like, I think I'm getting some anxiety about this. And then they're like, oh, this went so well. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yeah. Uh, if you guys want to get a hold of that uh, that new course, Connected Conflicts, you can go to Justin and Abby. That's abi.com slash connected conflicts with an S. Without further ado, here's the episode. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Justin here with Abby and, uh, and uh, her sister wife, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love how much that caught you. That really did. <laughs> because you were not because expecting that. That would imply that I was married to you, Justin. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which, I'm not going to lie, I don't want to be. <laughs> I'd like to say that publicly. I like my own husband. Wow. <laughs> I was <literally laughs> I'm going to have a talk with Trey about this. Because <laughs> uh, that was rude. And he needs to have a conversation <laughs> with you about no that. No one wants to be told they don't want to be married to the person sitting in front of them, but I had to say it. Something had to be done. Okay. Uh, oh my God. That's oh my God. Uh, Have you yeah, ever watched that show though? No. Mm. No, no, the I, I just it is like okay. it is intriguing. You know why I haven't watched that show? Okay, please. It gives please. me anxiety because I'm yeah. like one wife is enough, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like I don't need five of them. I know like, yeah. this is too much. No, I yeah. know. And it's not, and it's not because you're difficult as a female. It's not it's not one of those male female things. <laughs> I didn't think it was. It's just having more than one spouse just as it is. I don't no, want more I than know. one spouse. I yeah, get it. You should. No. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. I'd that be would... the alpha if there was another one anyway. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> no. Nope. One woman with five guys. That would feel that would would be seem yeah. even weirder. Than one guy. <laughs> I hate saying that. Alone. <laughs> I hate saying that out loud. <laughs> I'm going to take that back. I'm going to publicly redact that statement. Redacted. 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 Uh, 
Well, oh, this, I'm is, glad we this is our friend Gabby. <laughs> yeah, Gabby. And she's been on the podcast before. And Hello. we loved bringing her on one time, so we brought her back. Yay. Yeah, she that's really cool. You know that it like worked out well that you got a second invite. I know. Thank God. I was yeah. super relieved to get that text. All, <laughs> all of our guests that haven't been invited back are like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess that makes <laughs> something. Oh, God. It's what like, yeah, I know I moved to Wisconsin, but you could have still invited me back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, last time. We had conversations with you, Gabby, about conflict mm -hmm. and uh, your journey on conflict, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. One of the things about Gabby uh, is that you are an amazing learner. Mm -hmm. Like oh, you so are nice. someone who is a, is very a humble student of life and where you want to embrace whatever's in front of you, grow from it. And that's something that you've done really radically well with conflict. And something that I think that Abby uh, took notice of is how you've really been growing in your journey with compassion. Mm. And compassion is something that has been uh, dear to us. We actually have a, a course called The Compassion Project. And- um, <laughs> Why try, is that so funny? Because <laughs> it's a sales pitch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 <laughs> drop that in. <laughs> uh, but, but we have that and compassion has been a journey that has been really- I think they actually have to watch, I think we go through The Compassion Project in our year long school. Didn't you mm -hmm. do it? Yep. Yeah. And um, most of it. when <laughs> most of it, no, 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 you guys Not don't as, require us to do all of it. It wasn't like I just chose <laughs> it's funny. bailed out on it. Um, but for me, I grew up in an environment that had very little compassion. I'm not just talking about my immediate family. I'm talking about the culture that I was in didn't have compassion. Mm. And it's something that when we get connected to compassion, it's a game changer for our lives yeah. and all the lives of people around us. So. Um, I'm excited to talk about compassion with you today. Yeah, you've been on the journey of compassion. Why don't you talk about what what your your internal world was like about compassion from growing up? Okay, so growing up, my parents did a good job of teaching us about empathy and compassion for other people, and they were they were really kind and compassionate towards us uh, with their words. But I would say a lot of um, the action and the energy around the house was a lot of, um, there wasn't, a, it wasn't overflowing with compassion. Yeah. And, and mostly it was like the way they treated themselves, I would say. Totally. So what I was seeing demonstrated was different than what they were telling me and how they were treating me. And so I think there's a phrase like things are caught and not taught. Yes. And that has really stuck with me because it's a little bit horrible for parents. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it very is. true. It the, is. Your kids learn from watching how you do something. Yeah. And they learn from just the way that they felt when they encountered something happening. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing they remember. They don't really always remember the things you say. They yeah. really remember how it made them feel. Right. And I definitely grew up in an environment where... Um, people like my family <laughs> like outwardly judged a lot of people not totally. not to the people sure just to us yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. that's so a very we, common family culture which is yeah yep. super super mm -hmm. common and so i grew up hearing a lot of comments being made about like oh my gosh that person gained so much weight oh my mm -hmm. gosh why don't they why didn't they look a little bit nicer why didn't they dress up why when you go over to their house and then you left and being like wow their house was such a mess it felt mm. so gross or they why can't they just sweep their floors yeah. or like so i grew up hearing that a lot from my family yeah um and so that really colored the way that i saw other people and the way that I saw myself. Cause to mm -hmm. me, I was like, well, if you're saying that about Sally across the street, then you're probably going to think that about me too. And yeah. so I think as a protector, I also just decided to think those things about myself. I think yeah. that that's what judgment is, is whatever we judge other people for, yes. we have to be, we automatically are held to the same standard. Totally. And it feels good when we're judging other people. <laughs> But yes. when the, the tables get turned and the I judgment know. comes back on us, it, it feels suffocating. Yeah. And I, I think of it like a stick where judgment has two sides and one end of the stick is to hit you with. But every time I hit you, it hits me. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I mean. like it actually I like, love if that. I hit, and I remember that is like, so funny. And the idea that you're like, what is hitting me? <laughs> oh, my God. 
God. Yes. Oh I remember when we got married and I was like, I will never be the couple that fights in public. Oh, you I know, because yes. I had watched couples and I had that judgment stick and I was hitting other people with that judgment stick. And then you get married and all of a sudden you're in Target and you're fuming around because he said something that yes. makes you mad. That's and yes. all of a sudden that stick that I was whacking other people with, I felt like being hit by over and over again. And now yes. I feel so much shame and yeah. self-judgment because so I'm true. now being the thing that I thought was bad. And that's the, it's so sad when we start to label things good or bad. Oh, I know. Because then that means if I create a bad bucket and I say, you're bad because you didn't sweep. Well, now... <laughs> If I that sounds so ridiculous, but that was, those true. are the thoughts that go through people's head and my yes. own head. A hundred percent. And so if I say like they are bad because their their floor was a mess, but then somebody comes over to my house and I and see something on the floor. I know. I am now like I'm in the bad bucket. Yes. And it feels miserable to be in the bad bucket. It does. And then you like you're just washed it and self-hate for it and you hate it and so then you try to judge yourself more you're like well i'm gonna beat myself up to get me out of the bad bucket yeah if i just hit myself with the judgment stick enough <laughs> maybe i'll get out and like it's the concept of like it, as long as we're holding on to the judgment stick we're unsafe whether we're beating totally. ourselves up or we're judging other people either way it's unsafe for us we have to learn how to let the judgment stick go I actually have and some judgment like a... right now about your mic that needs to be pulled down because it's driving me insane. Oh my God, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah, I moved it for my water sipping. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we don't want a judgment stick. We want like a compassion cloud. It's true. That's one of the things. <laughs> just wrap ourselves with. I said that's true to that. And I'm like, what is this compassion cloud? I was literally like, <laughs> just thinking that. Like, is it okay that I really don't like know a, what that means? <laughs> you sound like a Care Bear. I don't know why. <laughs> like, it sounds like some Care Bear I'm statement. Just, well, you need a compassion cloud. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Yeah. Why did I affirm that? Yeah. But it, 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 it's, it's true. Yeah. Um, I, I realized that I was absolutely obliterating myself and, and it, with, with that measuring stick yes. that I was using. And that was something that when I had so many people come into my office, they're like so debilitated inside of self-hatred. And I'm like, it's because you have this measuring stick. Mm -hmm. and this measuring stick of judgment is going to hit everyone around you and yourself. And like they had to actually come to the conclusion, that I have to stop judging people because I am reaping the reality of this yeah. constantly and it's tormenting me. It's really good. It's a really good way to put <clears throat> it. Yeah. Oh, you like that better than the judgment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't saying that. I mean, the compassion club part. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I didn't get that. <laughs> the stick I like. <laughs> okay. So we'll go back to your childhood. You you had a lot okay, of... Hold on. With your with your childhood, yeah, I, yeah. I watched a lot of that modeled as well. Okay. And yeah. again, like when Abby in talked... Her, in her childhood? Yeah. <laughs> Justin's been watching me <laughs> for years. For years. <laughs> Creepy Justin. Um, but no, I saw the same behavior. And we talk about so yeah. many family cultures. It's kind of like across the board. I think families that get together and they're like, together we can talk about how we're better than everyone else. Oh, 100%. Yeah. No, literally my my family would actually tell me things like you are better than other people <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to say yeah. but they actually would like they would i mean because they would say a statement about someone else but then they'd be like but uh, you would never do that gabby but right? you're but like like if my grandma was going to say about someone like they just can't keep the house clean but you what when you're a mom you'll you're never, you're never do gonna do that and and the heart behind it was trying to just encourage me she was trying right. to be like no gabby you're not like that like, you're not gonna be a garbage human being like yeah, that person you're not gonna be an embarrassment <laughs> to america <laughs> and the first world you're you're gonna be like you're gonna be able to have it all together mm -hmm. and you're gonna have a nice clean house and it's all it's all gonna be good for you and i i remember hearing those things and being like yeah like i think i can I think I can do that. I think I can be the person that that al that always is never that thing, right? <laughs> that I that my family judged. Oh, and yeah. it's just it's so impossible. And then once I had kids, I realized just how impossible it is. Because anyone that's had kids, 
or seen anyone have kids <laughs> understands <laughs> that it that you like just getting things done becomes so much harder. Yes, it's real. I'll spend like 20 minutes with Johnny and PT's kiddos. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even know how you guys are still alive right now. Like, <laughs> I, I couldn't do 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I just light fire to that house and walk away. <laughs> yeah, but just not with the kids, kids in it. it. That's not with the kids in it. I mean, it's all, you, you know. You mean trying to keep the house clean? Yeah. I just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You might as well just lay them in the house. And I was like, this sounds horrible. Wow. You I would burn those house. children to the <laughs> to a crisp. I'm done with you all. <laughs> Goodbye, family. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Saying, mm -hmm. like, trying to keep a house clean with kids. Yeah. that Absolutely. I couldn't. Yeah. It's, it's so difficult. Uh, I do remember, I want to add this too. I had, I've been a very judgmental person. Abby oh, yeah. we can attest to that. <laughs> accurate. Um, <laughs> accurate. And I mean, no, like, I honestly will say I have, I really have to. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it'd be like. I have also. Yeah. I most people be have. I'm being, I'm being nice. I'm being nice when I say, I'd be like, that person's a trash human being. And let me tell you why they're a trash human being. Like that is the nice <laughs> version of things that I thought at times. Yeah. Oh, totally. And I looked at it and I was like, no, but I don't judge myself because oh, interesting. I, but I I didn't because I felt like I was hitting all the marks. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, and when that's kind did of what we're stop, talking about. Though? But once I did, once I didn't hit a mark, then I was like, I am a trash human being. And, right. you yeah. know, there was Abby confronted me a, a lot in marriage where she was like, <laughs> I, that is accurate. Yeah, my verbal process, so especially in the early days, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't like it was out with a ton of people. Like, like you said, It'd our just family be wasn't, like me and you. It'd be like me and a couple of my close friends where we'd rant and rave about something. Oh, totally. And she'd be like, why are you saying that? Do you understand that you're going to end up, you know, that you're going to reap of that judgment toward yourself? And I'm like, no, nah, I don't judge myself. And I'm like, oh, but I do. I do. Like a great example is he used to judge people for being lazy and not working I did. hard. I did. Oh, and, and then when you had I, a mental breakdown. Well, yeah. Were you going to say more on that? Or was she, was she going <laughs> to? Sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have. I just interjected. I actually was going to say then when you had a year where you didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. An earlier <laughs> one. <laughs> you, time. you just had a lot of I times did. to judge yourself for. I, you? I had a moment. I think this is worth saying. <laughs> I talked about this the other day. Yeah. We were on a walk mm -hmm. uh, and it was kind of out away in, in trees away from any human being. So this is where I could have a nice little personal meltdown. And as we were walking and I hadn't been working, I literally fall against this tree and I slide down the tree and I'm crying and I'm Sounds like, painful. you married a loser. Oh. You married a loser. Yeah. And it was all because I wasn't working. And it was a, a season where I that, that wasn't on the plate for me. And now I'm having to face the monster of judgment that I'd participated in cultivating for so long. That's like a really, really sad image, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but that is actually what self-judgment is like. Is yeah, it is. The very thing, because you'd called people losers when they weren't working. Totally. Or when yeah. they weren't. Yeah. Just lazy, and then now job. you yeah. are, again, it's mm -hmm. the exact same thing. Now you've labeled a bucket <clears throat> bad. You put them in it, and now that you're in the same situation, you have to be drowning in that same yep. bucket. And oh, yeah. The, the interesting thing about judgment is judgment does not require us to know someone's story. In yeah. fact, oh, that's ju so great. Judgment so often has no association with the reality of someone's story. We never are actually seeking to know the full picture. We yeah. just see moments and we go, look at this dirty floor. <laughs> Why don't they clean this up? Totally. These garbage bags. Um, and, uh, <laughs> why is that garbage bags? But <clears throat> look at all those dildos over there. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Just thinking about stuff that's on my own floor. <laughs> when I don't clean. So many dildos. This is all over the floor. Crazy Gabby and Trey. <clears throat> <laughs> so, uh, I, <laughs> I don't even know where I, really I was going. <laughs> <laughs> <Everyone broke her. laughs> well, I did not know that was going to come out. My family calls me the family cusser. And it's for moments like that because I just say things. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I was thinking about how Justin called you one of the funniest people he knew in our last oh podcast my and how you are not disappointed. Yeah, not disappointing. And so I just thought that was great. Yeah. Um, you were talking about... <clears throat> judging others maybe <laughs> yeah, you're like look at those dirty floors those dirty floors and stuff like that. yeah uh yeah, i don't know it doesn't matter the point is <laughs> is that it doesn't require us to 
know someone's story, yes. right? But once you actually get behind, get into someone's story, you're required to engage and have to humanize the person and know more about them. Then you have to know about the mom who was up all night having mm -hmm. one kid like diarrhea and another kid vomit all <laughs> over her and <clears throat> a dad who like had to go to work super early, excuse me. <clears throat> and he's busting his butt at work and can't be at the house. And all of a sudden they're just scraping by and you start getting the bigger story. And you're like, of course it doesn't matter that the floors are being swept. Everyone is just surviving really difficult conditions right now inside of this. Well, yeah. and that brings up, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was you just going to say exactly what you're saying is we often judge without the complexity of humanity. Yeah. We, we judge others behaviors and we judge our own intentions so i often can be like well i understand why this much stuff is happening but i'm going to judge you without thinking through what could be going on for you and one thing i wanted to say is we're talking about a sh laura duncan uses this terminology and i think it's really great she talks about shame highs yeah. and shame highs wow yeah are when <sighs> you are doing the thing that you've judged so you're like I will never uh, leave my house without vacuuming or whatever, like, you know, right. Then, and every time you vacuum before you leave, you feel that shame high, see, I'm doing it, or I will yes. never yell at my kids. And so every time you want to yell, but you don't, you feel that shame high of like, see, or I will never um, get dysregulated or I will, whatever the thing is, is that we've learned, I will never do this. And when we feel like we're performing, we feel the shame high. Yeah. Which is, I feel like I'm lovable because I'm doing the right thing. Yes. And the reason it's called the shame high and not self-love or self-worth is because it's not saying I'm lovable innately. It's saying I'm lovable when I do good. Exactly. And then the shame lows, you can't, it's the same thing. It's like one stick. So if you are feeling great about yourself, because you're performing well, that also means you'll feel horrible about yourself when you can't perform well, yeah. yes. because there's no way to do that. And so people who do a lot of performance have a lot of places where they feel a lot of pride and mm -hmm. then a lot of places where they have a lot of shame and beat themselves up a lot. Totally. When I think the point that you guys had been making earlier about uh, judgment allows us to not have to know someone's story. We yeah. do that with other people and we also do that with ourselves. Yes. yes. I'm so because glad the you're more that, that I've understood my own story and my own history and my context, and not even just mine, also my parents and my grandparents, uh, the more that I've been able to have compassion for myself and, and be like, wow, it actually, it makes a lot of sense that I would walk away without saying anything in an argument it makes a lot of sense that I would feel triggered uh, by sex or it makes a lot of sense that I would shut down and not want to have a voice it, those kind of things start making sense and you can look at your life and think oh it it just makes it makes sense that I would do that that doesn't mean I'm gonna keep doing that sure. but it does make sense and I can have compassion for why I would do that in the midst of deciding I am gonna grow and I'm gonna change yeah but understanding your story and then and then that's the same for other people too yeah well and that's i think that's the main theme of our school is everybody makes sense yeah our I job is to just find out why and how so our own story makes sense once i can figure out why i make sense it eases so much of the self-hatred and the frustration because when i understand why i do what i do you can have compassion Totally. You know, I want to add this as we were talking about that. It made me think of this phrase that I heard a lot as a kid, which is there is no excuse for that behavior. Mm. Oh, wow. And that phrase told me that nothing about my situation makes sense for why I'm here. Mm. Oh, wow. There's no, yeah. it's not reasonable that <laughs> I could end up in this circumstance, acting in oh, this way, doing this behavior. That does actually There's no excuse that. for that. I've never thought of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I guess there's no excuse. I'm just bad. There's just something wrong with me. Yeah. I just shouldn't do this. And I think that right. there's a lot of people that have heard narratives like that. Like, there's totally. no excuse for your behavior. Now, knock this off and stop doing this. Uh, well, I mean, was, even people, people say those kind of things, even as adults. Like, you yeah. would say, I could never imagine being a mom and treating my kids like that. Totally. I could never imagine killing somebody. Right. I'm not saying I killed someone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying 
we all make I can I can imagine <laughs> vividly um, with we, dildos. We, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is that a joke? Oh, oh my god! Uh, that was oh well my played. god! <laughs> well played, Abby. That's very. That was a nice callback. Mm. Um, but I think that narrative is so common. Yeah. In so in so many, uh, so many people's thinking is like. Yeah, I, there, there is, there is no circumstance where I would ever call Do someone that name. Like that, there's yeah. no, there's no way. And whenever we're using language like that, that is like ding ding, you have some sort of problem with that. There's some sort of trigger around that. Yes. Whenever you're using huge language like yes. that. Yes. And it's ding ding that can easily get heaped back on. Oh, me. totally. I remember hearing this story when I was growing up. My pastor was talking about. Um, a pastor of a church who had had an affair and they were having a board meeting to talk through what to do with it. And the board, the person who was leading the meeting said, who here thinks that given the right circumstances in life and the right situations oh, yeah. that you could have an affair? And the one person after a few minutes raised their hand and they were like, Tot like if I was tired and we were disconnected, and there was this person giving me attention. I could totally see that that could happen. And so the, they were like, you are the person that should walk them through the restoration process because of your ability to actually see that. But I remember that story like deeply impacting me because of the reason of we have to be able to un empathize and understand other people in order to get that same compassion back in yes. our own journeys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great point to one of the biggest things that actually helped me with self-compassion towards myself yeah. was understanding common humanity mm. and really and not just understanding it cerebrally and on a logical level, but really getting to the point where I had experienced enough pain in my life where now I could be like, mm. I could say I wow, I can, I can understand how someone would have gotten there. I can understand how someone got to being homeless. Like yes. I would drive on the road and see homeless people and literally think like, wow, that could be me. Mm -hmm. Given the right circumstances that yeah. I could be that person. Yes. I would see, um, or hear about someone having an affair totally. and think that 100% could be me. Yeah. You put me in the right circumstances or I guess the, right the wrong time. circumstances <laughs> and, and, and mix a bunch of things together. Yep. That could, like, it could any of these circumstances, anything that any human could do, it could be me. Yeah. And it's something Jordan Peterson talks about. Like you don't understand you're, he said something like you're not really connected to your humanity until you could look at a Nazi soldier and say, that could have been me too. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. And that is so impactful to realize like there is no such thing as a person who isn't a person. <laughs> like, right. We're all, we are all humans and yes. we are all capable of amazing things and horrible things. Absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. the humility of that. So a shame high is like, I want to judge you from looking at you from above you. Like I want to yes. say, I would never do something like that. Yes. And you're getting to feel above other people. And that's the self-esteem kick. And so common humanity is, can I see that we're the same? Yes. That in this, in this, If I grew up with the circumstances you grew up with, and the, the core values you had and those things, I could easily make the same decisions you make. Um, that ability to come down off the high horse, it takes humility, but it also doesn't mean that you could fall at any given moment. Mm. When you are judging someone from above them, that also means you could fall off your pedestal and have to hate yourself at any given time. Totally. And so the safest place is to begin to see that there is we all have the capacity in our pain to do destructive things. And yes. we all have the capacity when we're well loved to do remarkable things. Totally. And we all have capacity in pain to do remarkable things. Um, but we, uh, you know, I was going to say that we <coughs> as humans are addicted to judgment. Mm. Oh yeah. Right? And that's because we aren't connected to unconditional love as a free resource, mm. right? So 
I feel like the only way that I can acquire love is through the concept of some form of performance. When I can enter into judgment, I can now all of a sudden assess that my performance is better than someone else, and now I'm deemed worthy of receiving that love that is already freely given. Right. That I can't actually earn that love, but now I'm like, okay, this is the way I'll work myself to it. I will judge others. Now I will elevate myself. Oh, I'm not good enough. Now that I know that I'm not good enough, I have to figure out how to make myself better. And again, I can work myself towards it. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, so let's keep talking about your journey. You yeah. grew up with a lot of judgment. Yeah. And oh, yeah. you were taught to have empathy for other people, but also there was judgment going on, which I think is yes. very normal in families. Actually, before I get back to that, I was thinking one thing that me and Justin have had to really practice. Oftentimes we learned to express our feelings through judgment. Yeah. So when I, mm. if I was frustrated at something someone did, I'd be like, they're not thinking at all. What is wrong with them? Yeah. But I didn't know how to feel my own feelings. And so for a long time, me and Justin used a lot of judgmental language. Sorry, I got hooked when I was thinking about yeah, good. Yeah. your family culture and how we've had that culture before. Yeah. So we really started recognizing that we verbally processed with judgment to communicate our feelings. And now what I'll do is when I start to process with judgment, when I start to be like, that Jack and Indy, why would they do that? I'll be like, okay, wait, what is it that I'm feeling? I'm feeling really alone. The The mistake that they made makes me feel like I am the only one who's thinking about all these details and that makes me feel out of control or I'm feeling really mm -hmm. powerless or, um, and so we've had to start processing pain because we've used judgment to be the way that we offload pain after a day. Like when you right. get home from work and you're frustrated from the day, it's so easy to just gripe about what happened, the, the people, instead of like, what is it that I actually am overwhelmed by or experiencing? What is the deeper thing going yeah. on inside of me? And that's one of the ways that we've begun to change the judgment culture in our relationship. Yeah. And <clears throat> what it ends up doing is it actually ends up creating uh, more care and more self-love because instead of putting the attention on someone else mm -hmm. being like, you're an idiot, it's, oh, I'm feeling pain. I'm feeling abandonment. I'm feeling loss. Oh, I'm giving an actual like connection to myself. And then I'm able to go, okay, what do I need to do about mm -hmm. this? Because if someone is behaving in a, even in a destructive manner, I can't control them. Yeah. But and, and I'm never going to solve that. But I can solve like, oh, there is actually pain here. How do I take care of this pain? Now I'm going to do something about it. Well, it kind of all ties into that idea of like, I need something externally to either be great or to be horrible to blame or fix yes. my problems. Yes. yes. And so that idea, it just all plays into like it, it, that it doesn't start here. Mm -hmm. it, so judgment and blame, it's all like, well, my day was horrible at work because my boss did this yes. and, and I can't believe they would ever do that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Or my day was amazing because someone gave me a hundred dollars. <laughs> it was, it's all this idea that it has to be outside of you, mm -hmm. which is just <laughs> like the Unrealistic. least true thing. Yeah. yeah. If you need the outside world to make you happy, you will never, you'll very rarely be happy. Oh, never. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, not never, but not, rarely. Not lasting happiness, <laughs> not, not happiness right. that is uh, stable. Yeah. And I used to spend all my energy venting about other people instead of Definitely. recognizing, oh, I'm feeling alone or I'm feeling scared or I'm feeling out of control. And again, yeah. then I get to attune with myself yeah. when I do that. So that's, that's good. Okay. Back to your story now. <laughs> that was a long <laughs> circle. Yeah. Um, but so you're on their journey of self-compassion. What was like a, a moment when you realized you did not have self-compassion? Okay. So a great moment. Let me tell you one little little moment for when I was a kid, great. just to give you like a kid picture of yeah. what I was like. Um, I remember I was probably like 12. I did a high jump contest. And a few days prior in gym class, I had like I had set the school record for high jump. So I was wow. going into this thinking like 
this is going to go well for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got this. Like, all I need to do is replicate that. I'm going to win this whole thing. Like, there's going to be no kid that can beat me. Yeah. So I'm going into this competition thinking that. I do the competition at, at the lowest bar level. Oh, I you, you miss it. I choked. Like I oh, I I got so nervous yeah. that I I just my head and my body couldn't communicate anymore. <laughs> totally. And my body didn't do what my head wanted it to do. <laughs> of course. And so I totally I like I messed up the whole competition for myself from the get-go. And I remember leaving the audit the the gym and going to the hallway and just yelling at myself literally and mm. saying cuss words to myself i also grew up in a very christian home like we did not cuss yeah totally. so this really came out of left field so i was beating myself up and i remember my friends coming at all and all being like scared like why is gabby <laughs> acting so crazy um so that's just a little picture of like that was that was me when i was like 11 and 12. i was so hard on myself i have a lot of stories like that mostly mm. with sports if i didn't do something right I really hated myself for it. And in my mind, that was going to make me better, yeah. <laughs> which it never did. Um, then fast forward to as an adult, this was just a few years ago. And um, I, <laughs> I, my husband was turning 30 and he had always wanted me to go blonde. And so I decided for his 30th birthday that as his gift, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to say this as his gift yeah. to him i would dye my own hair blonde <laughs> i love it so funny so i was but thinking, you're imagining oh i was imagining this was gonna like this was gonna be like fun and sexy i thought it was gonna be this whole thing like totally. yeah. it was gonna be like this like awesome fun surprise he and, like, walks he was, in you're a blonde bombshell he's like whoa yes we're gonna make this radical is the love best thing i've ever seen <clears throat> yes i 100 percent thought it was gonna go that way yeah just the way the day played out and how much freaking longer it took to dye my hair oh from very mm -hmm. dark Brown, to, blonde. to blonde like it took so many hours we yep. also had a very little baby at the time i had not planned for like what time was it going to be back what time was he going to be back how long was it like is it going to be like when the baby's in bed i hadn't thought any of that through totally. i had just thought i'm going to get my hair dyed blonde and then we're going to have really good sex after <laughs> he's going to be so happy that i'm blonde it's going to be so hot and then i get home and that was so not the way it went at all and turns out he actually felt not loved <laughs> by the fact that I decided to dye my hair blonde for his birthday. Right. And I don't think I got him another birthday gift. I think that was my no. only like I bet I bought you this. I literally think that was my only gift. Yeah. But him. it's my hair and my body. This is what I have to offer you. Yeah, I'm like I'm like how what could how could you want anything more? Right. And anyway, a few days He was probably thinking that money could have gone towards a PS5. Oh, he was probably <laughs> most definitely thinking that because it was like three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Oh it was gosh. so expensive. And so anyway, I was thinking it's going to go amazing. It does not go amazing at all. And I could feel that he was really upset. So a few days later, we had a conversation and I was like, uh, it seems like you're angry <laughs> about something. And but also and, something you didn't mention is that you had a meltdown after your own blonde hair. Oh, 100 percent. So like, it wasn't it was, even like, I'm so excited to give this to you. No, you it was you were like, I hate myself now that I've done this. Yes, it was. There was a lot of hatred going yeah. on from me, well, from Trey. Not really. Trey didn't hate me. But so anyway, we're, we, we're going on this trip to Florida. And on the trip, he basically ends up saying like, that actually really hurt my feelings that you decided to get your own hair done, <laughs> blonde for my birthday. Yeah. And I just went into a shame spiral. Yeah. I felt so embarrassed and ashamed. Mm. And I remember being in the airport, uh, in the airport bathroom. And I, I had another moment, like exactly like when I was 11 or 12, where I was just cussing at myself and saying, Gabby, you're so stupid. Mm. You're so dumb. Mm. I can't believe you would ever think he would want you to dye your hair blonde for his birthday. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't get him anything else. I can't, I, I'm the, it went on. I was probably in there for 20 straight minutes, just beating myself up verbally for mm. what, for the choice that I had made. Mm. And 
And so that's like literally the picture of you beating yourself with a judgment. Stick. It is. You're like, yeah. It is. Yeah. And, and and I was just so ashamed that I had chosen to do that. Um, and that was one of the first moments where I remember talking with my counselor after that, Laura Duncan, who I saw for years. And she is just I love her. Um, and I remember her just saying, that's so sad that you had to say that to yourself. And I just remember thinking like, but that was like appropriate to say to myself. Aww. And she, when I, I would tell her things, she would always say, that's so sad. I just remember thinking like, what? It's not sad. It's just the way it is. Like, <laughs> you just talk to yourself that way. Uh, and uh, she always had so much compassion for me. But anyway, that was one of the first moments where I started realizing. Well, actually, I don't even think I was aware of it at that point. I don't think I was very aware that I had a lot of self-hatred yeah. that was just stewing underneath. underneath there. Yeah. But then a couple of years later, I had a, a little thing where I had ordered um, some flooring that I ended up seeing in person and absolutely, like it just wasn't what I envisioned. Yeah. I ordered it online and then I got it in person. And it was too late, like the deadline was coming for the project. So I, I hated it and I cried for days and days and days. And I had another one of those moments where I emotionally berated myself because yeah. I picked a floor Wrong. color that I myself didn't like that much. This was for my own house, mind you. Like yeah. this wasn't for someone else's house. Oh, totally. This was my own thing. And I remember putting in the floor with my little brother and like with every piece of laminate that I would like, that I would that I would hammer into the floor, just thinking like, God, I just hate myself and I hate that I did this. And I hate that I'm here and I hate that I that I could have just spent more time. I hate that I didn't think about it earlier. I hate that I all of these things went on and on. And that was the moment that I realized I now I know what it feels like to have self-hatred. Mm -hmm. And whenever someone had talked about self-hatred before, I always like, thought, I don't, I don't have that. that. I think I feel great about myself. I always thought I, that. I I do things well. I'm funny. I yes. can sing. I'm pretty. I don't hate myself. I 100% I didn't think I did. And it took a few like explosive situations with myself for me to realize that there was a lot of self-hatred just underneath the surface that I had never... Mm -hmm really let myself see and I had never been in a painful enough situation in my life like my life circumstances to where all of these little things would have surfaced that level of pain I think a lot of things in my life had surfaced pain but it hadn't surfaced it that explosively mm -hmm. and it was so exposing to see like wow this is these are really the things that I think about myself right. and the things I really say and think is appropriate to say to myself and treat myself. Like. Well, and I think one of the things that's important is we normal, like how we treat ourselves is normal to us. Oh, yeah. Because I'm thinking about your story and thinking about how many ways I've heard you talk about how you've talked to yourself in not extreme moments like that, where you had a very critical self-talk towards yourself oh yeah that's but a great point i don't point. think that you actually noticed that i no, think those, i never I think did you needed those big moments to show you i don't think you were aware like actually but consistently i'm kind of harsh with myself and consistently i'm kind of always looking at what i'm doing wrong and consistently i'm if, if things so don't look right but i think it's very common that we kind of like categorize things like, oh, self-hatred looks like I don't have any confidence or I, mm -hmm. I shrink back in a crowd and I don't have a voice. And, and that can be self-hatred. But also you can be very charismatic and beautiful and powerful and just have a voice inside that is beating you up anytime totally. that something goes wrong, anytime something's disappointing, anytime something doesn't turn out the way you thought it would that our own self-criticism can really uh, shut us down, but it can become common where we don't even notice it. Yeah, and it's not always loud and mm -hmm. screaming at yourself because mm -hmm. I had never had, a, actually I hadn't, hadn't really had moments yeah. where I was like berating myself to that degree. Yeah. That helped me expose the fact that I that did have self-hatred. Yeah. But usually it just looked more like, Oh, Gabby, that was so embarrassing that you went out of the house looking like that. Yes. Oh, Gabby, I, I bet I bet they thought that you didn't look pretty. Oh, I bet yeah. they thought what you said was way too much. Totally. It, you, it was more just like small Constant things. Yeah. criticism. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And to me, that never occurred to me as self-hatred. I was just like, yeah. no, that's not, I don't think that. Like That's just normal. I'm just a confident, fun person. Yeah. But 
It's hidden in there. It is. It yeah. was. It was hidden. And Definitely. So, what are some of the, judgment? Sneaky. What yeah. are some of the things that have helped you grow in self compassion? I mean, a huge one is uh, is compassionate self talking and validating myself. Mm. So that's a huge thing that you guys have has had us do in school just like over and over and <laughs> over and <laughs> over uh-huh. and many 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 times yeah. every week every day <laughs> and i didn't think when the when we first were doing it mm-hmm. and we would do it i was like oh wow well, again okay interesting like an- another week that we're doing this and then it would be like the sixth or seventh week in a row <laughs> that we were just like writing out statements of like compassion and validation towards ourselves yeah And that was when I started realizing, oh, this is becoming natural to me. Mm. This is so, so a practicing, like thinking back through my day, like what was five moments in the day that I can think of? And I can write out a a statement of compassion compassion and attunement and validation for like, wow, it makes sense why you do that. That must have been really challenging. Or I'm really proud of you for, for decide, for, you know, refraining in that moment or whatever. So after practicing so much, um, I re- I suddenly started realizing it actually became normal. Yeah. And I was on a trip a few weeks ago and I was really sick, like when I was traveling. And I naturally just instantly thought to myself, oh, Gabby, this is this is really hard. This is a lot to travel and to be pregnant and to be sick and to be vomiting literally oh, and to, in the airport, in the, in the airplane, in the airport, in a random trash can, like wherever oh. you can. It is a lot to travel alone. It is a lot like I actually just had naturally I had those thoughts. Oh. And so that was a huge one was actually just practicing it like yeah. just day in and day out mm-hmm. for school. Um, but then also connecting with my history and my story and understanding has given me a lot of compassion when I've looked back over over generations of like how how they treated their kids and how their kids treated their kids how my parents treated us and realizing like oh there is a lot to sort through there's a lot to overcome so it makes sense that I'm still dealing with difficult things Mm -hmm. because life is a lot yeah like, it, it, is, it is it's hard and it's painful yeah um and so i think those would probably be the some of the biggest ones would be validating myself and um understanding i love that my That's why good. let's do i just had this thought like i'm gonna put you on the spot for it okay if you were doing like today what are like a few things you would validate yourself for oh that's great or have compassion for you today i would say today i probably did it today Ooh, because now it's just becoming such a normal part of my day i love which that. is very sweet yeah um i would say i woke up this morning and i just had a really bad headache mm. and but obviously the kids still just need <laughs> to be clothed and to be their <laughs> and diapers eat. changed and have breakfast and to eat and um and so I, if I was thinking back to that and, and doing a little exercise, I would say, oh, Gabby, that's, it's so hard to wake up in the morning and, and to not feel good. Yeah. It's hard enough to just to, just to get yourself dressed mm-hmm. and awake and going and to get yourself food. Yeah. Let alone to do it with two little kids little who littles. are actually screaming also <laughs> and then laughing and then screaming it and then running and then climbing on the counter. Mm-hmm. And it is a lot like it's yeah. a lot to handle. It's a lot to handle two little kids. And it is especially a lot to handle it when you don't feel good. Yes. And I'm really proud of you for taking the time to still get up early and have time alone for yourself. Mm. I'm proud of you for asking your husband for help when you Mm. felt like you were getting overwhelmed because historically I did not do that yeah and I secretly resented him yep and would huff and puff and close cabinets loudly (laughs) all of the codependent stuff communicating Uh. without your words yep um and so I would say I'm really proud of you for for communicating that you didn't feel good and that you wanted some extra support I'm proud of you um for still going to a play date when you didn't know if you felt like you were up to it. Yeah. I'm proud of you for taking time to um, to do a breathing exercise and to take a little nap, even though you really wanted to get stuff done. And even though the house was a disaster, <laughs> like a certified disaster, 
<laughs> and like if someone walked in, I would feel embarrassed. I would well, I would start explaining. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Did I so say crazy? So I would say, yeah, I would. Just, those were would probably be the things I would say. What I think is truly remarkable is that I just asked you that off the cuff, and you probably named like seven kind things that you were proud of yourself for. Totally. And that you that you genuinely feel good about. Yeah. And that oh, honestly, yeah. Yeah. I want to say on on the note of her being able to rattle those off. Yeah. Oftentimes when I had people come into my office and I'd give them homework, one of the homework things is I'd say, uh, you know, write down 15 things that you're frustrated with yourself about or maybe 20 things that you don't like about yourself. And they'd be like, real fast. I'd be like, all right, five things you enjoy about yourself. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And all of a sudden they're deer in headlights and they're like, this doesn't feel right. (laughs) And I was like, I told you I had (laughs) 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 self-hatred. Boom, there it (laughs) is. There it is. I told you you didn't have compassion for yourself. And totally there. It's interesting because especially when it comes to something like compassion, People feel that they have these weird offenses against things like compassion. They believe the lie that if I have compassion on myself, I actually will not show up to life. I won't change. I won't grow. I will only give myself permission to stay stagnant and live passively inside of life. Um, And so that there's this lie that says, I will become a better version of myself Mm -hmm. if I hold tight to judgment Mm -hmm. rather than uh, grasping on and grip, gripping on to compassion. Mm-hmm. Totally. The compassion cloud. <laughs> <laughs> to bring it all full circle like, to the best analogy. Let go of the, compa- the judgment stick, but grab a hold of a <laughs> compassion, compassion cloud. cloud. <laughs> Float away. Yeah. And so that that's, again, <laughs> that's one of the things that they have to realize is that going, I talked, I talk about this, going through the nature of darkness will never yield the nature of light. Yeah. So you can't expect that I can go through consistent uh, self-condemnation, self-criticism, self-hatred. You can't expect that you can go through those and then find yourself in a better, more hopeful, joyful, happy life. You can't find an abundant life trying to operate moving through that. You actually have to go to the nature of life, the nature of, uh, of, right. of goodness and say, I'm going to connect to compassion and it's actually going to produce a person who's vibrantly thriving. Yeah. That was very well said and I loved it. And I Mic feel drop. So one, we're going to wrap this. Well, <laughs> one thing I, I wanted to wrap with is there, there's so many things I love listening to you share, Gabby, because you are refreshingly honest and mm-hmm. you are so authentically present. And both of those things are delightful, but, one of the things I feel so proud of is the more compassionate you've been towards yourself, the higher your shame resilience has been. Definitely. And so I've watched you be able to own your mistakes or your flaws or what, I mean, however we want our, our messes. Right. Um, I've seen you be able to own that more, the more compassion that you've had because totally. you don't have to then put yourself in the bad bucket. Like I can make a mistake and not, be put in the bad bucket. I can, I can realize, oh, I'm struggling with this thing in my marriage, but that doesn't mean I'm in the bad bucket. Now that I can have compassion and understand why I'm struggling, I can actually have more kindness, which enables me to show up differently. I was thinking in both of the stories with like with Trey, when you did your hair, the higher shame resiliency we have the better we can comfort others in how we affect them, impact mm, them. You totally. Know, like I just, yeah, because I couldn't show up for him at all. He was actually hurting about yeah. something that he needed to and mm-hmm. something that he was disappointed by. And I had no capacity because to show up for him at all. You were fighting your own shame bully. Yeah. So you couldn't 100%. even see him. No, I, I, I couldn't at all. Yeah. I only noticed that because that is my own story with Justin. And there were so many ways when I had so much judgment and self-hatred I was much more focused on my judgment and self-hatred than I was on being able to give to Justin so in true. the areas that I had impacted him negatively. Which and comes that's, across very narcissist, narcissistically, yeah. right? Yes. Like, I, 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 that was going to be the thing I wanted to say. So many people that are labeled as selfish 
are just in so much pain mm -hmm. that they literally cannot see yes. past their own pain. Like if you had a, if we were we were sitting here and one of us had a broken arm, yeah, it would be expected that the person with a broken arm would probably be like, can we like get this? Can I, can <laughs> someone help me? Like I, they're gonna talk about it the whole time. They're never gonna. They're it's gonna be the focus of their whole life. Totally. Like trying to get their arm mended yeah. because they have a broken arm. Yeah. And that's where all so many of us are walking yes. around with broken hearts yeah. and we label people and ourselves as selfish. And I had been labeled selfish. Totally. Because especially in that season of my life, yeah. I was in so much pain yeah. that I acted so selfishly. And but now I look back at this weren't weren't selfish. They were not selfish at all. When I look back at it, I can say I, I really, I actually, truly at my core, I am not a selfish person. No. <laughs> selfish. It's hard to say. Selfish person. Yeah. Uh -huh. I did some some behavior that seemed, and I did act in selfish ways. Yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. I am not a selfish person. Yes. Yeah. And that's really helped me see people differently too. And now when I see someone that's doing behavior that seems selfish, I can really easily separate Oh, they're doing that thing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they are that as a person. Yes. Whereas I, a few years ago, I would have never, I would have not been able to separate those yeah. two things. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. It's good. What a good conversation. Yeah. I'm loving this. I'm sad that it's almost over. I know it's sad. I will say we are about to do our school uh, applications are opening. Yeah. It oh, is so fun. It is a process that you need to do. So we'd say get in. Get your application in right away mm -hmm. if you can. The school is a year-long school. And just like Gabby was talking about, it actually will create new habits in your life. Oh, and definitely. it will help you. It'll help you learn why your story makes sense. It's going to help you understand why you react the way that you do, why you trigger the way that you do. And it'll help you have compassion. You know, even when she's listening, even what she just said in being able to see like, Oh, I can actually see that I was hurting in that season, not that I was bad. Yes. Our ability to actually learn to turn towards ourselves with compassion and kindness can transform our whole internal landscape and the amount of torment that we're in. And in the school, we teach you how to regulate and how to help others. And it is a great skill set if you want to be a life consultant or work with people. So you can go to justinabby.com. Yeah. Yes. And look up Life Consulting Masterclass under our courses mm -hmm. and uh, you can apply there. Yes. <sighs> well, that was a fun episode. Any <laughs> final words, anybody? I just wanted to say for anyone that's thinking about doing LCMC, mm -hmm. it is just it's so worth it and mm -hmm. it is so amazing. And even if you don't necessarily want to be a life consultant, the things that you learn about mm -hmm. yourself and about God and about emotional health it's it, tr it will completely transform so much of your life that mm. it's like it's so worth it even if you're not going to be a life consultant it'll just change everything mm. so i would say just do it it's just, just do it really do it. good do it. or at least apply yeah. and just like figure out if you know yeah and if you guys are just interested we'll send you a free session of school so you can actually yeah. see what it's yeah. like and give you all the information so you can just see if that's something you'd be interested it's in. so fun <sighs> well Gabby, it was we fun having you. you. Yeah. You're the best. Oh, love you. Guys you. Are the best. I want love Trey you. on sometime. I, know. I want Trey J time. Trey J time. <laughs> J Trey time. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. Can we have that? Yeah. Yeah. And can both of you not be here? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sure. You guys can talk about us publicly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Behind your backs. <laughs> All right, people. We Yay. are out. Bye. Yay.